In this video, I'm going to be testing and comparing seven popular soft plastic swim baits. We have the Mega Bass Mag Draft. We have the Berkley Cull Shad. We have the Six Sense Hangover. We have the Bass Mafia Dangerous. The Spro Mega Lejon. The Signal Devil Swimmer. And the lure that started this whole six inch swim bait craze, the Bass Pro Shops XPS Comeback Shad. This lure was discontinued a number of years ago, and then it won several big tournaments in Bass Pro Shops has recently reintroduced it. There's kind of been some controversy over some of these baits, but I just want to put them in the water, see what they look like, and compare them all. Now, one of the first things that I want to look at is the cosmetics of each of these baits. The Mega Bass Mag Draft comes in at $17.99. It weighs an ounce and a quarter and is six inches long. The Berkley Cull Shad is six inches long and weighs one and one fifth ounce. The Bass Mafia Dangerous Swim Bait comes in at $14.99. There are two different versions of this bait, a deep version and a shallow version. I went with the shallow version for this test because it is more comparable to the other bait. The six since hangover comes in at 19.99 it is six and a quarter inches in length and it actually has three different sink rates like the dangerous swim bait i went with the slow sink model thinking it would be the best in comparison the spro megalajon comes in at 12.99 it weighs an ounce and three quarter and is also six inches long the signal devil swimmer comes in at 22.99 it is an ounce and a half in weight and although the packaging says it is seven inches in length it is definitely closer to six inches as you can see right here it is almost the exact same size as a six inch mag draft the bass pro shop xps comeback shad comes in at six inches long weighs an ounce and a half and only cost 8.99 now five out of seven of these baits are harness baits meaning they already have a pre-rigged harness inside of them the dangerous and the hangover are actually meant to be line through baits but the hangover does have a spot on the belly where you can rig up a treble hook to help improve your hookup rates now when it comes to swim bait fishing you'll hear most of the popular swim bait fishermen talk about eyes on a bait now all the eyes on these baits are relatively similar except for the hangover does have larger eyes than any of the other baits and apparently spro just said screw it when it came to the eyes because they didn't put that on any of their baits now with that being said i've noticed that while fishing a lot of these baits the eyes will come off anyways so maybe that's why spro decided to do that now something that a lot of anglers will get fixated on is the amount that the tail will bend in the back sometimes you will hear that the more that that tail bends the better the swim bait is and the more it will kick at a low speed now after taking these baits underwater you will see that this is not necessarily true it more or less just impacts the action of the bait but we will get to that in just a moment now if you look at the boot tail of these swim baits they are all a little bit different now i'm not a bait designer so i don't know exactly what the differences mean but i do know that the two that were most different were the devil swimmer which had this little tail fin on top of the boot and also the hangover which had more of a v on the bottom all right now that we know what these baits kind of look like cosmetically let's go underwater and see exactly what these baits look like when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is swimming through the water. I wanna look at a couple of things like at what speed do this tail start to wiggle on these baits? And also I wanna know which one of these baits can actually maintain the fastest pace. This video is brought to you by the Omnia Pro subscription. The true secret to catching more bass is learning how to efficiently find bass. That is why Omnia's Premium Pro app has become one of my main tools to go out there and break down a body of water. Say it's the springtime and I wanna find the warmest water on the lake, all I gotta do is add the water temperature layer to my mapping and it will show me exactly where that is. Or what I love to do is combine different layers. We all know when it comes to getting on a glide bait bite that you wanna find clear water as well as some wind. So simply combining the water clarity layer as well as the wind direction layer will show me every hot spot for a big glide bait on the lake. And now with no additional cost to premium pro members, the app has Navionics contours and one foot intervals for over 44,000 lakes across the US. The premium pro app App only costs $49 for the year. And not only do you get everything that I just talked about, but you will also receive 10% back on all of your purchases at Omnia as well as free shipping. So download the Premium Pro app and start your free trial today. Now, the first swim bait I wanted to look at was the Mega Bass Mag Draft. Out of all these baits, this is the one that I have the most experience with. One thing that I've always loved about this bait is how slow you can fish it, but I know for sure without tinkering with the bait, it has a maximum speed. So let's Let's find out exactly what those are.
Now, by using the GPS from my Hummingbird Electronics, I saw that the Magdraft would really start swimming the right way at about 1.3 miles per hour. I also found out that right around two miles an hour is when this particular bait would start to blow out. It would start to roll over on its side. Now, the nice thing about swim baits is you can always make modifications to them to get them to swim a little bit better or a little bit faster, but I wanted to look exactly what these baits looked like right out of the pack. Package. Now, moving on to the Berkeley call shad, I noticed that the tail would actually start to wiggle right about the same speed as the mag draft. However, what I also noticed is that the Berkeley call shad kind of had this weird wobble side to side until it hit about 1.7 miles an hour. At 1.7, this bait would really start to swim normal and it had a great action in both the tail and in the head. Again, using my trolling motors GPS, I found that you could fish this bait at 2.8 miles an hour without it completely blowing out, which is almost a full mile per hour faster than the mag draft. Now, does this make the Berkeley call shad better than the mag draft? No, but it does mean you can fish it at a faster pace. Now, the Six Sense Hangover is definitely a bigger bodied, thicker plastic bait than the rest of the baits. So I figured that it would take a little bit more speed to get this bait to run right. And just like Ben Milliken said in his video release of this bait, it is not meant to be fished super slow like baits like a mag draft. Now, what I found out is right at two miles an hour, this bait would stop doing its weird rolling action that a lot of people like to talk about and would start to swim with a lot of great head wiggle and tail wiggle. Now with a particular slow sinking model that I was using right about 2.5 miles an hour, you would see this bait start to roll over on its side. I gotta believe that the faster sinking, heavier baits would stay upright longer. Now the next bait I wanna look at is the Bass Mafia Dangerous Swim Bait. One of the biggest things that I noticed right off the bat is that this bait started working well at 1.1 miles an hour, which is actually slower than the mag draft. For me, I know that the mag draft gets a lot of notoriety on how slow you can fish it. But as we see here, the dangerous swim bait, you can actually fish even that much slower. Another big thing that I noticed about the dangerous swim bait is it wouldn't blow out until about three miles an hour. So it actually so far has the biggest window in which this bait works out of all the baits we have looked at. Next up is the Spro Megalajon. This bait would really start going right at 1.5 miles an hour. And you can also get it up to 2.5 miles an hour before it would start to blow out. To me, this particular bait just looked like it had a lot of action altogether. A tremendous amount of head wiggle and tail wiggle. Next up, the Signal Devil Swimmer. The first thing that I noticed about this bait is it would actually start working very well at 0.8 miles an hour which makes it the bait that you can fish at the slowest speed while still maintaining a good swimming action something else i noticed about this particular bait is that it just had a lot of body 
movement and to me it just looked really good in the water now fishing this bait very slow was impressive probably one of the most impressive things that i saw with this particular bait is that it wouldn't blow out of the water until about 3.5 miles an hour so this makes this particular bait not only the slowest bait that you can fish but also the fastest bait that you can fish next up the bait that started it all the bass pro shops xps now unfortunately the first one of these that i pulled out of the package was a complete dud i could not get this bait to swim right no matter how slow or how fast i reeled it in however after whipping out another bait i noticed that it swam perfectly fine right out of the package This bait was actually similar to a Mega Bass Mag Draft, but you could actually fish it a little bit slower. The tail really started to kick and the bait started to move right at 1.1 miles an hour and it wouldn't blow out until about 1.9 miles an hour. All in all, when you look at these baits, each bait has a little bit different window as to when they work, at what speeds do they work. You know, a, a couple that I was really impressed with, obviously the Devil Swimmer. It had a pretty big range as far as how slow it could work and now how fast it could work. Also, the Dangerous Swim Bait, another one that would work really slow as well as you could fish it pretty fast. But the thing is, is that speed is not 100% everything when it comes to swim bait fishing. You know, something that I think is important is the durability of a bait. And that is something that I really wasn't able to thoroughly test in this video. I think the best way to do that is just to go out and fish these baits, see how many fish you could catch on each one, but that would obviously take a lot of time to do so. The other thing that is really important to know about kind of the results that I found is that I am sure that depending on the baits that you get, this is going to vary a little bit. Now, although these baits are made to be the exact same within a brand, I am sure that there are minor details with each specific swim bait that is gonna allow that swim bait to either fish be fished faster or slower. I mean, look at the XPS comeback shad. I mean, the first one that I took out of the package, I literally, I couldn't even make the thing work. And the next one worked great. It worked phenomenal. Now, again, that's a pretty cheap bait. I mean, $8.99 for a swim bait is really nothing. So do I kind of expect that? Yeah, I guess you could say so. So you just might wanna buy a couple of those if you're gonna go with some of those XPS comeback shads. Kind of the biggest thing I realized with all these baits is they have such minor details that are different about them that I think for probably about 70, 80% of the time you're fishing, it may not even matter which one you are throwing. But I do think that there are specific situations where a couple of these baits might work a little bit better. For example, if you're wanting to fish a bait extremely slow, then baits like the Devil Swimmer, even the Bass Pro Shops, the Zao Dangerous, those ones you could fish extremely slow. Or maybe you're wanting to fish a bait in a little bit muddier water. If you, if you look at the video, I really felt like the Spro Megalajon had more head waggle, wiggle, and tail wiggle than a lot of the other baits. So I'm guessing that it puts off a little bit more vibration, which may make it a better bait in muddier water. Or maybe you're wanting to fish a bait across the bottom. Then to me, the dangerous swim bait is by far your best option. Now, with all that being said, I'm kind of gonna leave this open-ended as to what I think the best bait is because they obviously all have little differences to them. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, one of the best ways to help support it is by shopping at Fin Fishing. I have USA made sun shirts, one of the only ones out there on the market. I'm gonna leave a link for that right here. Also, if you wanna watch a video where I actually compare kind of like this video, a bunch of the best fluorocarbons out there on the market and actually come up with the best fluorocarbon, I'm gonna leave a link for that video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below and I will see you guys in the next one.